perhaps you can let me know, um, Brian, should we be following Robert rules for an advisory group or? I don't think it's necessary. I think it's up, it's up to you whether you want to that way. Okay. All right. So I'll just call the meeting to order then and knowing that it's not mandated that we're using Robert rules, we'll continue our informal discussions of the subcommittee um, of facilities for the airport. So that being said, I know that there, have you all had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting? Okay, great. I was uh, contacted that there were some changes, but before I read those into the record, does anyone have any changes on the minutes? No. Uh, so, and I believe, so Steve had a couple changes, and I know he sent them over. He had hoped to be here this morning, and in a minute I'll share with you his comments on, uh, well, he's not here, um, but just in terms of an FYI and approval, in case anyone has any concerns, um, he wanted to address a previous correction from our, or a correction from our previous meeting, and uh, it would have been on page three, paragraph two, where it said 10,000 gallon tanks being replaced by 15,000 gallon tanks. Actually 12. Page 12? There are actually 12,000 gallons. Oh, they're 12,000 gallons, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if no one objects, he'd like the minutes to reflect 12,000 instead of 15,000. Does that sound good? That's, that's accurate. Yep. You're on the fence, Supervisor McGowan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then the second change would be on page four, paragraph four. The word T hangers in the paragraph should be replaced with corporate jet hangers. And if nobody has any objections to that, sound okay? I hadn't seen that. Can you can I borrow your minutes there real quick? Paragraph four? It's the previous. It's not the June. Oh, it's not that one? It must be the May because June all we did. Wait, there's a Well. And June thirteenth. Well it's it's uh it's uh where it says T hanger seven and eight. Yeah. It should be jet hangers. Correct. Seven and eight. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds right, yeah. Thank you. Okay, great. So without objection, we'll go ahead and correct the minutes to reflect those two changes. So that being said, um, I wanted to share with you, Steve is not going to be here this morning, and uh, I, I think today what I'd like to do is open it up to some dialogue about what's on our agenda, what's been on our agenda last month, what's on it this month, which is again a continued discussion regarding the pending um, RFP for the future fixed base operator at the airport. And we had hoped as a committee, and of course had, had um, shared this at our last meeting with our county attorney who is a member of the working group uh, developing that proposed RFP that we, we had hoped for a draft RFP by today for this board to have enough time to take a look at and provide valuable feedback to facilities. That we do not have that in front of us today. Uh, what I have been advised, because we are a member of that facilities group, it will first go to facilities before it comes to us. And uh, facilities will have an opportunity to discuss it and uh, make whatever changes they feel uh, are appropriate. And then once those changes are implemented, it will then come to the advisory group. And Brian is here, in fact, to provide a little more detail for that. But before I go ahead and, and turn the meeting over to Brian, I did reach out to Chairman Conover. He asked that Brian give the update today of what's going on. And um, But I wanted to share with you Steve's comments to me just into the record for your own information while we're listening to Brian. He said, after the recent discovery late last night, and again, the we did not send that um, agenda out. We waited as long as we could to see if, in fact, we would be able to get that draft RFP for today, recognizing that's what's on our agenda. After the recent discovery late last night, we will not have an RFP to review from the county this morning. It seems appropriate at this time we'd be absent from today's meeting to focus on our already busy schedule, focusing on the new office, fuel farm issues, new corporate hangars, EA, et cetera. Furthermore, with regards to the parking plan, because of the continued delay with the county on this project and just recently the county put up signs to help with traffic flow, we now have a full plate in the above mentioned projects already in the works and we will need to table this until spring of next year at the earliest. Thank you in advance for your understanding and your help. So I just wanted to make it 
clear to you from Steve why he's not here today. And on that note, I wanted to turn it over per Chairman Conover to our county attorney to discuss with you what the status is uh, with the draft RFP. Thank you. Um, we took the comments uh, that were received at the last meeting uh, here and the ones that were received online subsequent to that meeting, and that has uh, pretty significantly changed the approach uh, that we were taking in the working group to how we're going to construct the RFP. Um, there were a lot of good comments and a lot of good points that were raised, and we're trying to incorporate those into what we're doing now. So the plan at this point is to uh, brief the facilities committee in two weeks uh, with where we think we are on it, what we think the best options are, uh, but there are a number of decisions that have to be made by the facilities committee um, that are going to be business decisions as to how to get the best product out to get the best uh, widest range and the best proposals in response to it. So we need to have some of that kind of direction from the committee because that's, you know, that's a, a function of the elected officials here. Once they've made those recommendations and we've incorporated those, then we'll have a draft to share both with the committee and with this group for, com for further comment. We want to, we're walking a fine line here with the public process on the one side and making sure the county's business interests are represented on the other side, which is not <coughs> always conducive to a public process when you're about to be involved in a negotiation. That's what we're trying to do. At this point, what I'd like to do is open it up and um, ask you if you have any questions, Travis. Oh, just, I have a question just on that last one. Would, it be, would you anticipate that the facilities would go into executive session to make these discussions, or, or would this be open to the public? Well, I think some of it's going to be public, but I think some when they have to discuss those issues like how to maximize the response and how to best utilize any leverage or maximize any leverage the county has, and I think that would be executive session. I could see the, the leveraging part, um, but I, th I think there's a whole lot more that needs to go on before that. But um, I would just like to remind everybody that uh, Mr. Skimmerhorn brought a proposal to us six months ago next week, and uh, we have nothing to show for it. And uh, you know, the, the, the hints at what direction we were going, which we received a, a month ago, evidently does has changed the, the direction, you know, and there were a lot of good comments. I think Mr. Montesi made some of the best points. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, if people think it's academic that we get this thing uh, rolling, I think they should be thinking again. And you don't need to know anything about airplanes, airports, or anything else to understand that if you want continuity at that airport, and that you know, that contract is expiring in just a little over a year. And uh, you, this is not, you're not going to find someone just to come in and replace them or for, for, to make the kind of changes you're talking about in, in scope. And if you don't have an agreement well before that point in time where it has to transition, then all of the leverage, 100% of it, this is what you ought to bring to executive session is going to be with the existing FBL. Uh, you don't have a choice. The FAA is not going to let you shut that place down. It's not a choice. So, I mean, this should be discussed months and months and months. It should be discussed right now, and you should be arguing over it. And it's, you know, I think you're already past the point of this being a problem. And personally, I, uh, I really don't want to be a part of this anymore because it's been, uh, it's, it's beyond where. Uh, I, I can tolerate it. So I, I'm just until I start seeing something here, I'm not I'm not going to have any, anything more to do with it. And I have heard from um, members that have said until we're able to to see a draft, and perhaps we should talk about suspending these meetings. If in fact that's the only topic that's going to be on our agenda, we have not received any referrals from facilities last month, nor did we give them any referrals. So we want to keep that in mind and what the mission of this group is. Tom, I know you had comments. Um, Brian, are you at liberty to tell us what sort of RFPs generally you're looking for as far as, and I know I asked last month, uh, there could be an RFP for what I might call FBO services, which typically Rich Air has been providing so far. And then there's also been talk of putting out an RFP for airport maintenance services, which so far county forces have been doing. Are, are you looking at one RFP to do both functions or looking at multiple RFPs to, to possibly keep the two 
two functions separate. And I don't know if you're at liberty to tell me that. Right. Uh, I think it's fair to say we have a, we have a direction that we'd like to discuss with the committee. I think that final decision is going to be made by the committee. We want, to, we want as much competition and as much interest as we can generate. Okay. But there's potentially three different scenarios, right? Yeah, there's potentially different a, combinations. A, yeah. a county owned, county run facility, mm -hmm. a private run facility, and then we're breaking down the segments of what happens out there the way I understand it. Status quo. We need to, uh, certainly, we need to be studying the um, RFPs that are already placed for those facilities. That, you know, there's county owned, county run one. It escapes me where it is, but there's county run facility. Yeah, Kansas County. And then, uh, yeah. you know, we need to get that. F, you know, we need to get that out and start looking it over. And then we need to look at the private ones and see how it matches up compared to what we do now. That's that's the way I would approach it. But uh, and then my my second cut, uh, Madam Chairman, is. It, it seems to me to be putting the cart before the horse that the matter goes to the facilities committee for some sort of a decision and then they refer it to us for technical input. My, as you know, my whole reason for being on this committee is to provide technical input as to how, what pilots are looking for, how airports are run, how are good airports are run, and it seems that it's kind of pointless for us to be weighing in on some decision that's already been made. Um, and, and so I just throw that out there to now your point is well taken and, and Brian I guess what we're looking for is a little more clarification on if it does in fact go to facilities first then come to the advisory group will it, it will still be in a draft form we'll still be able to provide that technical advice and then back to facilities to, con to continue those changes or is it possible that it could come here first then go to facilities how the direction I received from the chairman and from chairman Gerard yesterday was that uh, facilities are going to need to make some of those some of those basic decisions as to um, I guess format uh, and then it will come to this group for um, additional comment and refinement and detail. So while it doesn't sound ideal, Tom, it certainly sounds like it's still going to give us an opportunity to provide that technical advice um, mm -hmm. a little bit later than, than as Travis has pointed out as, as we had hoped. And, and I, I haven't had a chance to study the subject, but the whole idea of going into executive session to decide on what sort of an RFP we're going to put out there, uh, I don't know that that, comport, or that that fits my understanding of, of executive sessions. I mean, executive sessions are personnel matters or negotiating uh, dollars and cents, but, but deciding what direction the county goes, I would think that would be a public debate. But perhaps you've researched the point. That, exactly that will. This the direction the county goes will be a public debate, but the fine details of how to maximize our business position in the negotiation is going to be an executive session matter. Well, I okay. would say it's allowed to be an executive session. To the extent you have to decide what you're going to do that you don't want the, anyone who's responding to the RFP to know, <coughs> you don't want to make that public. Okay. Jeff, did you have a comment? Yeah, just regarding Tom's comments regarding um, having input, you know, we, we're accepting input, we want input, you know, Ross and I have gone to the Pilots Association meetings and, and had pilots bring up, hey, there's an issue with the contract here, so any, any of the, um, any recommendations, you know, it's not a matter of uh, us waiting saying we don't want recommendations, we want input now because, and then the major decisions will go through facilities, but there's a lot of details, so We've provided, um, certainly the pilots in this group have all gotten copies of the existing contract, um, example RFPs, you know, that we're using as guidance. And then to the extent that you have particular things about the airport or about the current operations or recommendations of improved services going forward or things that we should add into the RFP and ask a, a, a potential um, proposer to provide, we want that now so we can start building it in there and then in the, in the end, the, the facilities committee will give the nod to it. Um, but we're, Ross and I are certainly receptive to that now. So who is the best person to, to, if we did come up with such collect, uh, comments Ross? Ross? Yeah, Ross certainly yeah. points yeah. out. Tom, I would just ask that perhaps you copy in Amanda or, or Brian or myself so it, we can send it to the whole airport group, you know, this advisory group, because I think that 
that's important information that I'm sure other members of the advisory committee would want to see. Dr. Schwenker. You know, I I thought a little bit this last month I wasn't here because I was on a tour group out in the west and I looked at Yellowstone where they have concessions and Tara does runs the Old Faithful Inn and all that kind of stuff and realized there's a lot of parallels just as the National Parks wants the concession to be productive for the parks mm -hmm. we want an FBO maintenance whatever combination that does best for the county not just on money but by bringing people in and, and and everything else you know and just like out there there's some parts of this whatever contract that aren't necessarily beneficial for the FBO I don't think Zantara out there makes money selling diapers but they better have diapers in stock in some of the places and if you look at airports somewhat like ours as I've sent you the giant spreadsheets I've come up with I've looked at a couple things that are out there and one is that airports that are successful whether the county run the ones that attract airplanes have maintenance they have a viable maintenance and that's one thing that I'm terribly concerned about in the future we have two mechanics basically working part-time one who's in his early 60s has another almost full-time job now and the other is uh, 66 this year and they've done great work but we've seen maintenance grow in Middlebury and Saratoga at the loss for us who's to blame whatever well, lots of people will point fingers in all directions but if we don't have a very viable maintenance as part of whatever goes on here we're going to lose based airplanes we're going to have people not come here because if you get a problem you want to get it fixed when you're in town uh, the other is you know who takes care of maintenance on in other words the current situation I'm in a county owned hangar maintained but uh, it seems like the county gets only a small portion of the rent on a old falling down tea hanger and if I need the wheels greased Richie says go to <laughs> Ross uh, and so the breakdown of who maintains what just as with the fuel farm with hangers with things that are county owned needs to be very clearly defined who benefits what where and where and how and then I know there's discussion of you know who takes care of you know some of the services be it snow plowing but there's a lot of stuff on that the Saratoga contract that's one of the reasons the way it's done that there, you can't land at night because half the lights don't work uh, you can't land because of the trees where they had an accident what 10 years ago because you know the FBO is saying the trees are the county's problem the problem is the county's not paying attention and so a Learjet hits a tree and causes whatever the settlement was kind of damage but I think seven figures uh, you know so that when we look at this there's more than just snow plowing it's you know taking care of the lights it's taking care of the wildlife control it's taking care of all sorts of things around that have to be on the list if there's any consideration of farming it out it better very carefully to find what's there and the next thing that I have a concern about is if you don't follow through and do this so you don't have a restaurant but who gets control of the rooms or the space so there has to be a default that if you don't have maintenance or you don't do that that it defers, defaults back to the county or whatever so that an alternative plan can be come up with rather than saying well it's in the contract we can't do anything for 10 years now those points that you just made is that something that the group wants to discuss and um, you know make that recommendation over to Brian who's the representative from that working group or are you all in agreement on that do you want to go one by one I'm just you know trying to create discussion since I we're here appreciate it thank you I, I'll add my two cents you know my, my sure. technical advice for, for the supervisors in the room and the other non pilots uh, I think the situation with our, our present FBO at at Glens Falls is sort of a cup half full and half empty. Um, at times I go home to Ogdensburg and uh, for years up there there was no FBO. There was one guy hired by the Bridge and Port Authority and they sold service gas and that was that was it. You were kind of flying into the wilderness. Um, so I appreciate having the services we do at Glens Falls. On the other hand, it I noticed that the cup is there's a lot of potential that's not being realized at the airport uh, and I'm not I'm not sure why. If, uh, the lack of 
courage or if they've actually done business plans and the numbers don't work out. But for instance, uh, the, the maintenance um, is not fully developed. I mean, we have a beautiful, beautiful airport in this county, and this could be a maintenance hub for hundreds of airplanes to come here for maintenance from, from the region. Um, airplanes are very mobile, obviously, and pilots fly great distances to have their planes uh, taken care of. My, my plane was painted in Maine. We have autopilot work done in Hyannis, Massachusetts. We had new radios installed in Concord. Uh, it, uh, my plane was parked next to a plane from Venezuela. <laughs> have, you know, it's amazing how these things get around. And this could be an export industry for Warren County at that airport if the, the maintenance, the volume of maintenance work done at our airport could be easily doubled and probably quadrupled if somebody put their mind to it and was actually marketing it and, and increasing the maintenance staff. Uh, flight training, again, uh, Jim Barrett's a great guy, but I don't think, I think there's a, a great deal of potential for flight training in the area based on the number of people that have the money to take flying lessons. Uh, there could be more, but you never see an ad in the paper about learn to fly. There, there's not a lot of promotion. Um, we wouldn't necessarily have all of these things, but you might have a paint shop. Uh, not not there. Uh, radio shop currently, well, there, there was a radio shop down in Schenectady a lot of us went to. I think he's retiring, so there's potential of somebody moving in here with a radio shop, but I don't see that being pushed. And then air charter, it's saying it's a crime is probably an overstatement, but I mean, it's, it's, it's surprising that you can't go out there and charter an airplane, Part 135, if some uh, high net worth individual, you know, wants to go to Boston shopping for the day or New York or somewhere else, that you cannot just show up there and say, I'd like to charter the airplane somewhere. We don't have a plane available for charter on our field. Um, they fly them in all the time, but still, it's unusual that we don't have an air charter operation here. Saranac Lake does, for instance. We don't. So I think trying to be sensitive to people's feelings, I would describe it as half full, half, half empty. It could be worse, but it, it also could be better. And as a taxpayer going forward, I would, it would make me happy to see our airport better utilized, generating more revenue for the taxpayers and uh, mm -hmm. making it more conducive for, for people visiting here by air. Other comments or? Do you want to add it to this? I, I just think the, uh, you know, Dr. Schwenker and Mr. Clements just touch on a lot of these. Uh, there's a lot more there as well, including these. Which, and when you, when you start thinking about all this stuff and the magnitude of this, mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you one additional example, um, which I think is uh, relevant. I was talking to a supervisor in Columbia County the other day about their airport, and they had a similar opportunity to get uh, new tea hangers that, uh, you know, uh, basically paid for by other people. Um, you know, on the county, you know, the county could do this, but when they went ahead and looked at their contract, and they have a longer term contract with their FBO, and their FBO does basically everything, um, what they found is that uh, the county could not really benefit from that. They couldn't, you know, they were going to only get a very small percentage of that rent. So they decided not to even put the hangers in there because they weren't going to get anything from it. Now that probably hurt all the, you know, the people at the airport and everything else too. So, you, know, you would think that, again, when you put these things together, if the investment's going to be from the taxpayers, then the taxpayers ought to get the return. Uh, however, if the investment is, you know, Mr. Skimmerhorn, then obviously he deserves the, the return. But they didn't really differentiate that in, the, in this contract with uh, Richmore uh, Aviation no relation to, to risk air. And um, you know, these are the kinds of things, and I know Mr. Skimmerhorn wants a 20-year lease. So, I mean, you've got to get a lot of things figured out in a very short time. Good luck. So what I'm hearing then is that there are, unless there's objections from this committee regarding those, those comments, what we would like at this point, Brian, for your group to take a look at is exactly what's been um, stated here. I'm sure that's something we can go back on YouTube, we can look at the minutes, but just from a quick reflection, obviously, the maintenance is something that's been talked about quite a bit here this morning, the flight training, the air charter. I know in previous meetings we've talked about breakfast, and um, I think that certainly rich air did make accommodations to try to find some happy medium in the, until there's a, a new contract. But certainly this group has voiced concern about not having that available um, at the airport as well, uh, as well as the, 
as indicated um, by Dr. Schwenker, the snow plowing, the lights, wildlife control, um, who would have control of that space if it's not being utilized, and, um, and, and again, really highlighting that maintenance. But I think those are issues that certainly could be uh, without a formal document being sent to Ross or to Jeff, that information could be sent over to that working group at this point um, to make sure those concerns are being addressed. But I think for purposes of this group, in, in terms of a timeline, and, and Brian at any time correct me if I'm wrong or being a little too ambitious with this, but you know, again, we had hoped that we'd have something today. Uh, you know. From what I understand, we hope in the next couple of weeks to be able to have an update to facilities. And then after the update to facilities, that conversation will be incorporated within the draft RFP. And then hopefully by the August advisory meeting, we would have a draft RFP to look at. Again, that's, that's my hope. I mean, okay. we've got a lot of moving parts. We've got six people whose schedules we're accommodating and trying to get our meetings and get our work done. But yes, that's, that's always my hope is to get this done as quickly as possible. And it's, you know, there's always obstacles when you do that. All right. So my question to this group then is how, how do you feel about moving forward? Uh, would you like to, you know, our hope was that number one, when we formed this group, this was on the top of our radar screen. No pun intended. This is what we we really wanted to take a look at, but uh, we also wanted to increase some of those communications. We have a goal, we have a mission statement, we have other items as well, but this has been at the top of our priority list. So, uh, you know, we hold off as late as we can before setting out the agenda in hopes that we'll have that information for you. Um, do we want to continue to meet uh, in August, or do you want to, you know? wait, see if we're going to have that draft RFP. I mean, this is your group. Um, we've come to the table to try to be that, that subcommittee from facilities. We're very grateful that we have an opportunity to provide that technical advice. As, as Thomas said, you guys are the experts here. It's great to be able to provide that to, to county government. Uh, but I, I really would like to hear from all of you on, on how you're feeling about things. I'm willing to keep on meeting. Um, I think consistency is good. Uh, and. Hopefully, we'll have an RFP that we can add to or critique or talk about at the next meeting. Um, even if we don't, I, I think it's good that we, there is a body that, that meets regularly, and hopefully, we can get the county government in the habit of referring things to the committee mm -hmm. uh, to get technical advice before before they vote on before they vote on things. Okay. And just so that you know, we did um, ask that a report from this committee would be a standing item on the facilities agenda. Uh, and you know, every month we ask if there's anything they would like referred back to us or vice versa. So at the end of this meeting today, I'll also ask if there's anything you would like referred over to facilities. But staying just on target with how people are feeling, perhaps I could just, you know, Supervisor McDonald, how do you feel I think about we should continue to meet. Um, Specifically, as it pertains to August, uh, if we're going to be discussing the facilities, the, the, hopefully a, a draft RFP, then it's not likely that we will be required to meet. Okay. Right? We'll actually have something to sink our teeth into and something to, to, to actually look at, something tangible. So as far as August goes, absolutely. Well, we hope, and again, that, that may or may not be the case, um, but if you could please send a very strong message from this group that we would very much appreciate that being the case. I will. Thank you. Dr. Schwenker, how do you feel? I feel we should still meet. I think, you know, there's still, in leading up to the RFP, there's still a sense of we should have, we should be providing to the county input so that they have a vision for what the RFP should accomplish, and we're just not you know, line paragraph two, whatever, it's what's the vision of what this is going to look like and we want something that's beneficial to the county. Mm -hmm. That includes building some business in my perspective as well as doing it as cheaply as possible. But, uh, and whoever the FBO, I, I believe FBOs should be allowed to make money, but uh, so should the county. They own the facility. Uh, Jeff, do you want to weigh in at all? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Travis, is there anything additional? I, I'd like to see them continue to be scheduled. Um, I've made every one. I am unlikely to come to one where I don't have a, something from uh, Mr. Reichenbach uh, prior to the meeting. I'm unlikely to show up. 
And that's a very good point, again, Brian, to the extent that we can, even if there's some particulars up that you're working on that this group could look at ahead of time, uh, you know, we're definitely okay. looking forward to having that information so that we can do a little bit of homework before we sit here so that we can make it as productive as possible. Ross, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I appreciate every, everybody's suggestions and um, don't feel as though you have to wait until the meeting to share your ideas with me. You can reach out to me anytime with ideas and suggestions for the RFP. And uh, just my two cents is that we need to work as hard as we can to save money for the taxpayer. We, as Travis has mentioned, have a great proposal in front of us, um, or the county does, but we also have an opportunity to provide exactly what this group was formed for. Um, it's just waiting for that is, uh, is going to take a little bit of patience, and hopefully we'll be able to have that if we continue to stress our desire to see that in the very near future. Is there anyone else from the public that wants to weigh in on this uh, this morning? No? You guys are good. Uh, so that being said, it looks like we will schedule the August meeting. We will, again, ask for any information ahead of time and hopefully have a document to be taking a look at. That being said, are there any items that you as a committee would like to see referred over to facilities or a topic of conversation that you, you feel the group should be looking at? Again, I don't have any refer. We've had referrals in the past. I think we had a very busy January, February, and March with referrals from facilities, uh, which has been productive, and we've seen some results. But uh, I didn't know if there's anything in front of any of you. Is somebody going to capture these comments this morning so they go to facilities? Or oh, yes. Um, I th I think the minutes definitely should go. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe even Brian, if there's a recap of what you send over, that could. And I am so sorry, Supervisor Garrity. I went around the table and I did not even ask oh, how you felt. Oh, that's another pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, uh, Ross, if you can get me Genesee County, uh, I'd like to sure. see that. Start reading that over. That's a county run, right? Yes, it is. Columbia yeah. County would be a great one. Which one? Columbia County. Yeah, be a good one. Is that an FBO or is that a? That's the other way around. So, yeah, uh, Genesee is run by the county, right. and the FBO basically runs Columbia. And in defense of, of the working group on the FBO, a lot of the, some of the things <coughs> that was brought up today have been discussed, but informally. I mean, you know, these are all good items, you know, and uh, as I said in one of the meetings, you know, we're still going to own those buildings, irregardless of who runs the airport. And so there's got to, you know, our budget will never go to zero. It's, there's still going to be maintenance to done. It's just defining how it's done and how, how the buildings are kept up. So a lot of good comments. Wrote them all down, and it, certainly they need to be incorporated in any RFP. And I don't know if we just put out one way or three RFPs, you know, where you focus on the maintenance, focus on county run, or focus on a private FBO. I don't know how you're going to sort that one out. but but. Uh, it, it, all good points were made today by people, and, and that's what you need to get to this info, I think. Provider McDonald? Something that while we're uh, in Genesee County, uh, what was the other one you mentioned? Columbia County. Columbia County. Um, you actually mentioned Saranac, correct? Saranac is municipally run, right? Yeah, well, Saranac Lake and Watertown. The Saranac Lake one, if I recall, they, have, they do have that charter. Uh, Airline it makes uh, two trips per day year round to Cape Cod and three during the summer. Yeah. If we can get some literature on what that contract looks like. We're not eligible for that kind of service. I can tell you that. Yeah, so, that's the essential air, so, essential air service. Yeah, I can feed that information. Well, to you. Just, there'll yeah. be some good information for us to know so that way if it's something like that comes up, another supervisor, another mm -hmm. you know individual from the public, at least we're more well informed on that matter and something that maybe we can. Uh, work with in the future. Yeah, I'd actually reached out to them several years ago when I first started and inquired about their interest in providing service at the airport unsubsidized. Mm -hmm. And uh, the challenge that we have is our proximity to Albany International. Mm -hmm. Difficult to compete for commercial service. Yeah. It's good for, for people to understand our situation in relation yeah. to commercial services, though. It's very important. Yeah. So. What does it cost? 50 miles, if you're within 50 miles of an existing airport, you don't get a central air service? or there, There's something that we are within. Yeah, there's a definition. Uh, we actually qualify um, based on that guidance, um, but it dates back to 1979 when airlines deregulated, and there was uh, 
Horn County had actually had a lapse in coverage that particular year, so we didn't meet the definition of having existing service. The uh, county appealed that decision, and DOT uh, upheld their or original decision. What happened was that uh, 1969, Mohawk had the crash up on Pilot Knob. About the same time, the Northway became full function. And so suddenly people decided they'd rather drive to Albany than risk going to Glens Falls. There wasn't an ILS then. Um. And uh, you know that crash. Mohawk put a Fairchild into the back of Pilot Knob. I think it was 20 loss. So for clarification then, it's not the miles that prohibit us but from being able to do that? It's this decision? Yeah. And, and the miles 50, like not um, nautical? No, it, it's, um, I think it's, it's closer to, if you're within 200 nautical, nautical miles of a medium or large hub airport, so maybe and you had commercial service when they deregulated. So I'm sorry, I was laughing at myself as I said that. Could, could you just repeat that? Sure. I, I believe the definition is if you're within uh, 200 nautical miles of a medium or large hub commercial service airport and you had commercial service when the airline industry was deregulated. Um, the definition that we failed to meet was having existing commercial service because we had less than 50% of the year we had commercial service that year because there was a change in carriers at the airport. Um, while it was still regulated. So because the, of the lack of 50% of airline service that year, we, we didn't meet the strict definition of having commercial service. You have to be present to win, and we weren't present, so we didn't win. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do about that now? That decision was originally appealed by Warren County, and DOT upheld their decision that Warren County did not qualify. Matt? If we we get some of that, uh, whether it's the minutes or the copies of those appeals or something, so we can review oh, those? Oh, look and see. Yeah, I had something you're interested in. Yeah. yeah. History. I had the email history the matters. DOT on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll see if I can find that. Okay. It was a while ago. Yeah, Ross, that would be great if you could get us the kind of that backstory, that narrative. And uh, I also heard then if we could get some of that literature about oh. Saranac, if we could see the contract for Columbia and Genesee. And if you're sending those to our county administrator anyway, perhaps you could copy the advisory group. Well, uh, what I've been doing is I'm receiving these. I've been adding them to the folder with the Dropbox links, the Dropbox link. Um, so if you want to keep checking there, I've added a couple more in there as I receive them. I will make sure that okay. uh, the county attorney's office has copies as well for their files. But is there a way just to send the email out though? And just yep, these are yeah. huge. Con you know, they're not big. If Some you could them, just yeah. do a PDF sure. attachment for those four yep. things. Even if they come in separate emails, that's fine, but I think it kind of grabs people's attention a little bit more than check the drop box. Okay. But I ask not. a question, Mr. Yeah. McDonald. I think you were perhaps asking about the finances of the municipally run Saranac Lake Airport. And we all have the caveat that they do have airline service there, so it changes the numbers mm -hmm. compared to our airport. But still, you're wondering how the numbers shake out. Absolutely. I just think it's, uh, it's information that is very worthwhile to, to try to understand. Because the town of Arianna. Yeah, actually. Harris Town. The town of Harris Town, yeah. Harris Town. Uh -huh. Yeah, hang on. Okay. Town of Harriet's Town. Yeah. While it might not necessarily apply for us, at least we will have the information mm -hmm. to discuss that with other individuals who might say, well, why don't we bring in an airline? I know that's a conversation that is always brought up to me. Uh, with regards to our airport, and so I think it has nothing to do with any uh, extension or anything, to be clear. Yeah. The, uh, some of these, like Saranac, are these is under essential air service, and I think they all are. They all are, <coughs> and I think the likelihood of the essential air service program continuing in its present form over the next 20 years is less likely to, so the subsidies may be less available. There's, you know, just to mention, there are not, there's lots of airports where this comparison, I, I gave a number of you a copy of a spreadsheet I did which shows 50 some airports, 5,000 foot runways, uh, many of which, a lot in Pennsylvania are, are run by the counties that own them. Uh, but there's a giant spreadsheet I can send you that too if you want, but I think a couple, they send it to you, yeah, and I did send it to you, right? Yeah, okay. So it's out there, but there's a lot of ones that are county-owned 
lots that have separate FBOs. Um, we're not reinventing the wheel here in some way. It's been done other places, and we can try to find ways to, to see what's been successful or not. Well, and I also think, Matt, you bring up a, a good point, and it's one that I know people, so that narrative will be very, very important, um, especially for me, because I think I only understood half the story, uh, but it, I'm constantly hearing from people, why can't we um, have commercial airlines up here? You know, that's, that's the one thing, if the taxpayers are going to fund the airport, they want to know how come they're not seeing that uh, return on their investment. And one of the things... You know, we hear a lot about roads, we hear a lot about snow plowing, you know, but I have to say we hear all the time, um, especially during door knocking season, why on earth do we have an airport that you can't fly out of unless you have the money to have your own jet? And, uh, you know, that's, that's a concern on, on a lot of people's minds, and I think having that narrative and knowing that we've exhausted all possibilities and that there's no, nothing that can be done at this point, um, let's let's make sure we have that in writing and understand it and talk about it and uh, knowing that how can we best utilize the the investment that we do have that's been made both by rich air and by the taxpayer and I think that's why we're sitting here and trying to make sure that we do as good of a job as we possibly could do in getting this RFP out. Another um, factor is probably 9-11 too in that with the increased TSA requirements for security um, it's not economic to set up a TSA checkpoint, the magnetometers and all that, at a little airport like Woods Falls. So, whereas the old days you might land a Cessna 402, like flown by Cape Air here, and put yeah. people on and take off with the minimal staff, it's a, it's a big operation now to provide security for an airport. So it's, it's unfortunate, but, uh, and, you know, we're being so close to Albany. Is our yeah. so it's less our airport needing that as it is the destination airport when you, uh, our airport, Cape Air, for example, doesn't require that. Their aircraft is small enough they don't require security screening, but the people that are going into Boston where they're going to, they have to be screened. So okay. it's more the requirement at the destination airport than it is at the small airport where they're flying out of. When was the last time you ever talked to Cape Air? Uh, it, it was three or four years ago at least. Yeah. And they, they laughed at you? or? <laughs> no, they didn't laugh, okay. <laughs> but they, they made it clear that um, they just can't compete with the automobile when we're within driving distance of right. a commercial service airport, especially one that has a low-cost carrier like Southwest at it. They, they can't financially compete without the subsidy from the Essential Air Service Program. E even with that, it's difficult to compete. Uh, I, I think I remember talking to Ross about that back then, and I think one of the things they said was we would have to have minimum guarantees. Yeah, they would want a minimum, minimum guarantee, revenue guarantee. such a level that... And if, yeah, I mean, that's so, a thorny but issue. I think I think it's worthy to go back to the original DOT decision and see if see if there's any uh, way to look at that again. Or I mean, if it was years ago, maybe there's been other airports that have had uh, another appeal at it or another chance at it. Um, so we should at least finalize that and get all the information and, and update what our options, if any, are with that. Yeah, hopefully I can. Like I said, it was quite a few years ago. Hopefully I can dig out those emails. I don't know if I'll be able to retrieve them or not. I'll have to check my backup hard drives. Well, I'm positive there's probably somewhere out there that... I think you might have email. No, I meant <laughs> when, I, when I communicate with USDOT. Well, I'm confident that we can get that information, Supervisor McDonald, and get it out. Um, I, I'm sure it's got to be somewhere. So, But it is a topic of conversation. It is one where people are hearing about our airport, this new proposal with the RFP, in discussions about the extensions. Every single meeting we're talking about the airport at the board. Um, so I do think it's on people's minds, and, and we should be well educated and informed on, on what the correct answer is uh, when we're asked that. So. Um, I, I think that was a great question and one that we need to, to get the right answer. You know. So is, again, any items that you would like over to facilities? No? Any other business that you want brought before our group here today? Matt? Just uh, curious on an update uh, from, uh, from Ross on how the fuel farm uh, Insulation work? Uh, the insulation went well. Um, we still got a few uh, minor issues that we're fixing up on the punch list. I actually expect them out this week. They got some parts they had to order. Um, but the fuel farm is in service. Um, we're having an issue with the self serve pump, but that was not part of the project. We're working on getting that fixed. We got our vendor involved, um, but that wasn't related to the construction of the new farm. Um, the tanks are in place. The, the, the new 
containment area is in place. Everything is working except for, like I said, a couple of few minor punch list items. Any questions from anyone? No? Okay. Um, so we'll uh, make sure all these concerns and, and um, issues are raised over to your working group, Brian. Uh, we'll give a brief report at facilities. We'll look forward to your email on, on those other documents, Ross. Okay. And uh, of course, if anything else comes up between now and our next meeting in August, please feel free to reach out. And uh, you know, I appreciate your time. I understand this is a volunteer committee. And again, we'll do everything we can to make sure that our uh, feelings are conveyed in the strongest manner possible uh, within, uh, within our, our county as well. So thank you for your time, and we'll close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be down there if you want to come down. Yeah. All right. Uh,